A very good morning to each and every one of you. Good to have you here, FYI family. And we'd have you know that from the back end, we can see how you guys are queuing up. <laughs> queuing up. Kyle Bino and Debbie Collins. Abira. Good to have you on the live this morning. And all the other folks. I will trust that as we come on this morning, FIL family, you share that live. Smash that emoji. But you're all ready for story. You're all ready for trouble. Good morning to all the beautiful folks out of Wickenham. Lachman Aziz. Good to have you on the live this morning, Craig Hunt. Good to see you there as well. Good morning to the beautiful folks of Wickenham. You know that our coverage of Wickenham and some of what's been happening there. A lot of reactions out of it. <laughs> Especially by the authorities in Wickenham. Good morning to you too. You know, the amounts of Wickenham. You know, we, not a series we can start keeping up with the amounts of Wickenham. Yeah, people coming to untold wealth. Just like that, Emerson Holder, Joel Ward, Trevor Davidson, Patricia Drally, Gwen Anderson, folks come into some inexplicable wealth, just like that. So we're going to be continuing our coverage of Wickenham, highlighting life on the island, politically, socially, and otherwise. Because we know y'all want the content. <laughs> y'all want to know. Royal Gulliver, Yolanda, Penelope Hudson, Good to have all of you on the live this morning. If you know somebody from Wakanam, Wakanam, thank them for us. Good morning, good morning. If you're now joining us on whichever page, whichever profile you're joining us from, we're happy to be out here with you folks this morning, or inside or outside. Wherever you're joining us from, some people are prepping for work. Some people on the way to work this morning, on the way home from work. Some of you are prepping for the day at home, studying, you know, getting things together for the family, keeping the family in tap. Oh, that's one of the hardest jobs. I, I uh, hands down, give it to housewives, house husbands, <laughs> house children. Keyboard Hope. Good morning to you, Keyboard. Rastaman, Andrew Griffith, Dolly Anderson, Paulette Marnes. Good to have you on this morning. Pedal Thorne, Leon Logan. Good morning to each and every one of you. Smash that emoji button, folks. As soon as you come on, we got so much, so much to share with you folks this morning. You guys fired up and ready to go? We hope that you guys are. There's a lot happening, Tawana Green. How are you doing, Tawana? Big shout out to Tawana Green, Valerie Clark. How are you doing, Valerie? Sandra Hanover. Says, good morning. Blessings to you. Oh, God, I'm walking that this morning. I'm walking that for the rest of the week. The blessings and the guidance of the Almighty. Walking that for the rest of the year. Everett Leonard. Loretta Argyle. Veronica Primo Rollins. Lynn Finans. June Chase. Lynn Finans. Lynn Finans. Lynn Finans. Out of Region 11. Veronica Primo Rollins as well. Out of Region 11. Veronica. Veronica. Dolly Anderson, how are you folks doing? Lester Thumb, Lionel Simon, great to have all of you on the live this morning. You know, so much things to say right now. It's never about Marley says. So much things to say, Onessa Wardin, Onessa Leon, Onessa Devon Sancho, Marlin Thomas. How are you folks doing? Good folks like Marlin. Good folks, Marilyn Thomas. Is Marilyn Lorimer with us this morning? Sukchan Sudhari. Sudhari Sukchan. Kyle Baino. Good morning to the FYI family. Smash up that emoji button for us. Oh, we have so many things happening this morning. So many, a lot. Great. A great amount. Folks, we're happy to have all of you on the live yet another day. Do us the, the, the great privilege, smashing that emoji button, tagging a friend, sharing it and sharing our live broadcast on WhatsApp, 
sharing it on your Facebook profile, on your page, if you're in a Facebook group. We want as many persons to get the valid, credible information. Folks, you all know if we do this, we don't need NCN, you know, to carry our message. We don't need DPI. We don't need the room with the news. Good folks work in all these entities. Good folks work in all these entities. But we won't need them. We can do it. We can do bad all by ourselves. <laughs> we can do it all by ourselves. Share the life, guys. Smash. Smash that emoji button for us. Pace and power. Power and pace. And as he speaks to you, I'm making sure to reset. At RN2, don't come around with funny. I'm making sure we set at RN2. Guys, we're so happy to have each and each and every one of you on with us this morning. From all the many places that you guys are joining us from. It's a privilege being here with you. And let, let's start with the good news. We're learning that one Mahika family, they're invested in a mega mall. They're investing in a mega, mega mall. And I think these are the, these are the low chance, the Ramlo chance. Prem Chan, Ramlo Chan, businessman from Ahaika. He's going to be constructing this mega mall, an entertainment facility. And we welcome that. We welcome that. I know one of the hot spots there is um what's the name of the gas station kk kk gas station something trying to fly my eye here now <laughs> kk gas station one of the hot spots there on that strip as you're heading up to barbies as you're coming along the tongue kk the raptor chan family planning this mega mall and entertainment facility folks gotta do what they gotta do if you got the capital you know, very fast like that. I was wondering, I've never really heard about this family before. Ramla Chan, how did they make their money? Were they into rice? <laughs> you know, rice not doing so well. Were they into sugar? <laughs> you know, how did they make their money? But the family, Ramla Chan family, report says business, um, a um, uh, businessman. Congrats to them. Congrats to them. People see the opportunity and you seize on it. You know, do what you got to do to get to where you need to go. Everett Leonard is on the live this morning. Good morning to all of you wonderful folks who are joining us today from the various places. So congrats to the Ramla Chan family again. Mega Mall coming to Mahika. Mega Mall and Entertainment Facility. They said the mall will feature an arcade, laser tag, Right. Carnival games, virtual reality domains, simulator rides, party rooms, and an escape room. That's something kinky to me. But again, congrats to this family. The Ramlo Chan family. Congrats, congrats, congrats. I'm looking forward to see um, to seeing that facility come to fruition. A second Starbucks mall. Starbucks facility is opening at Movie Tongue. Oh, I love me some Starbucks. What's your favorite? What is your favorite? I love me the, uh, the, the, the caramel frappuccino. Extra caramel. Extra caramel. Gloria of Chester. Good to have you on the live, Gloria. Gloria says good morning to everybody in the live. I love me some caramel frappuccino. Extra caramel. What's your favorite? So just like I'm looking forward to the Ramla Chan's family mall there, I'm looking forward to picking up a frappuccino at the new Starbucks outlet, Movie Town. So there's one at Amazon Mall on the East Bank. So they're, they're, they're going to miss me there a little bit. They're going to miss me there a little bit. Got to go check out what's happening at Movie Town. Had some time there over the weekend last with the family. We took our son to the play park there. Oh, he didn't want to stop. 
He didn't want to stop. He trying to give you a bad name. <laughs> What's your favorite Starbucks beverage? Hmm? Dolly Anderson says no coffee for me. Right? Elizabeth Narang says diabetes in the making. Be careful. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Right? <laughs> June Cameron says too expensive for the bad taste. <laughs> Y'all needs, you know, y'all left me my Starbucks. Left me my Frappuccino. Elizabeth, we ain't talking to you. We're talking to Antonia. <laughs> We're talking to Antonia. Devon Sanchez said, Bush tea. Right on, Devon. Right on, right on, right on. Right on. So that's the good news. I think it, I think it stops here. <laughs> I think the good news stopped there. You know, our reporting of the goings on at the Wickenham from the victimization of the legendary auntie data to the white telephones. Oh, our reporting <laughs> has been making the rounds. And folks, believe it or not, listen to this. Belinda Hall, listen to this. Belinda says, good morning, Sherrod and the FYI family. Barbara Ralph, Gavin, Tracy Clark, Elise. Since we visited Wickenham over the weekend, the government has gone to work. The government has gone to work. Big shout out to uh, Shamar there at GPI, Shaquille rather. Shaquille there at GPI. They sent Shaquille to work. It's interesting. You're here in the can have since we touched down. <laughs> PP7 white telephones. Right? Auntie Data. Diane Abrams says she ain't got Starbucks money. I can carry you, Diane. You don't worry. <laughs> Diane, I can carry you. <laughs> since we touched down, it's trouble. Right? Since we touched down, it's trouble. <laughs> we see the government pushing back. I know that's what good journalism does. Good journalism will push you to action. You start highlighting people and communities and so on that are being underserved or not served, underdeveloped. Oh, you could see some action. And that's what we saw over the weekend. It's, it's very interesting. It's very. <laughs> How many of you saw interviewed Auntie Dati last evening? How many of you? How many of you saw it? <laughs> so take a look at some of what DPI, you know, ran out with over the last 48 hours since we've been in Wickenham. Take a look, folks. Take a listen. Take a look and take a listen. Filled with agricultural products like rice, cash crop, poultry, coconuts, and even livestock like the one I'm standing right next to, the island of Wakenham is undergoing massive economic transformation. Yeah, so that's some of what DPI, <laughs> DPI has come out with over the last 48 hours. To try to stem the hemorrhaging, you know, the exposure of Wickenham. And that last shot there, you see young Shamar Gill from um, DPI. Shamar got a lot of catching up to do in this business. <laughs> but we wish him well, young Shamar Gill. Is that shade house in that graphic right here? Is that shade house? So, if you are viewing from any place in this country and you don't know what's actually happening on the ground there, you're going to think, Shamar got to be right. Shamar Gill from DPI. Squammy them sent him out. Brigadier Mark Phillips and 
John Mew called them and said, no, 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 no. Get on the ground there immediately. Shamar and team, we want you all on the next boat to Wicked Ham. Y'all gonna work for this money. That last image you saw there with Shamar Gill, he says, things booming. <laughs> booming. There in Wicked Ham. We visited that exact shade house. One of the white elephants. <laughs> One of the seven white elephants there. Right. One of the seven white elephants. Take a look. The shade house. Perry, we're here at what is supposed to be a shade house. Yeah. Talk to us about what's happening here. Well, this is Zelandia, Wakenham. Zelandia, Wakenham. Yeah. Uh -huh. The residents in Zelandia asked for a shade house. And when they asked for the shade house, the government, Ministry of Agriculture, get a plot of land and they build a shade house. Mm -hmm. For so many years now, nothing is going on here. We cannot say that they reaped anything here because they never plant. So what we're seeing here is just a building and the beds. Just the buildings and the beds. You yeah, understand? How would, you you let somebody, how, how, how would somebody get a plant here? If you wanted a plant here to use a shade house, how would you get well, a plant? Well, why I understand that the residents would come here and plant. But um, this, the last time I raised it at the RDC, they came and they filled some mold. And I see no other thing taking place here since then. What I see now is with the woodans taking over the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're done taking over the building presently. And there's nothing going on here. All if you look, there's so much of holes. Perhaps all this start to rot. Yeah, like you said, there's a shed there's a shed here with a covering. Yeah. There's some beds, a lot of soil, dirt in yeah. these on these beds, but nothing yeah. else has been done. Nothing else is done here. And how long has this been done like this? Yeah, you said this was for two, three years, man. Two, three years, nothing yeah. is not planted here. Nothing is planted. So there's another white elephant. Not a white elephant. Where have we been in other places on this island since we've been here? Mm -hmm. We touched the water place. Yeah. What, the, the, what do you call that? That's, 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 that's a that well? Is, that is a well. Oh, that's oh, a white well. elephant. That is a white elephant. The shade house here is a white elephant. The concrete, the drying floor is a white the elephant. The drying floor is a white, white elephant. elephant. Yeah. Right? The, we have reached the airship as yet. That's another white elephant. Millions of dollars. And if, when we meet there, we can talk to us. How much you estimate this cost, this drying floor? Not drying floor, they are the, no, sorry, this the, shade house. Shade house. The shade house is the vicinity of a couple of millions. Wow. A couple of millions. 10, 15 million but dollars. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, but I'm going to get a figure for you. Yeah. Well, two or three years, nothing is happening here. Yeah. Nothing is happening. And I think um, they didn't have an insight about this place. Many but what? When, look at, when you look at Zelandia, Caledonia, every single residence have large plot of land in the yard, which can plant anything and everything. Why do they have to leave their homes in the afternoon? That is a testimony here, that the people cannot leave their home in the afternoon just to come and plant two pepper tree, or two boro tree, or two shallot, when they have big yard space. They will not find that time. And so I think this will remain for the longest while. But again, no. This would have happened maybe because of some consultation with the neighborhood, the community here that a shading house is needed because it clearly it's not needed because nobody's planting here. The consultation is a party consultation. We need a consultation with the wider society, which have more knowledge than them, who will really implement this program. We don't have time for that. We just want a shade house. Somebody got to make money. Somebody. And that is the game going on. Let me build something, we'll get money. You understand? Know I can't see it no other way. But then the minister feels the two pretty architects on this island. You understand? Know and they want to put a money in somebody's pocket. Let me build it. I just hope people don't end up calling we could have the White Elephant Island. Or the White Island, I don't I think we're gonna change that when the time comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, folks, 
Yeah, if you just joined us, we're looking at some of the Waitali funds in Wakenham. And DPI just told us, fighting back against this, that thing happening there. If we didn't go and see for our own eye, we would have believed. The thing happening at this shade house, everything booming. Everything booming. <laughs> Rock and come in again. Chico and Gil from DPI. Filled with agricultural products like rice, cash crop, poultry, coconuts, and even livestock like the one I'm standing right next to, the island of Wakenham is undergoing massive economic transformation. Y'all saw, saw the shade house? <laughs> As part of the massive economic transformation. Maxine, did you see it there? Tracy Clark? Huh? Did you see there, Sheila Boychild? Massive economic and agricultural transformation. Yep. Transformation in, uh, in, in potable water, too. <laughs> Lots of transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Respect of manners to Shaquan Gill. They gotta send out somebody. They send out young, young Shaquan Gill. They gotta send out somebody. Folks, folks, <laughs> the water treatment, the 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 the, the, the well <laughs> built by the PPP, another white telephone pump station. Well, you take. Whatever name you want to give it. Weller Pump Station. Another white telephone by the PPP. Did Shaquan cover this? I don't know. There's two things we are looking at here. We're standing here on the San Susi Street. And this street, take it down to another street at the back here. Where the government then, the PPP, sit fit to encroach on this plot of land, which is a street, and build this proposed pump station. This pump station they build, and we told them you cannot build it here. They insist on to build this pump station here. When we have a pump station at Nikodak, they didn't buy that product. But what happened later, they spent $60 million in building this pump station. And if we look at it presently, the door is closed. And everything is finished there. We asked many times what will happen to the pump station that you have started here. Nobody looking at it. Nobody this pump station doesn't work. No, it never worked. Um, How long was this built here? This is built during the PPP, 2012, 2013. 2012, 2013, yeah. and this pump station doesn't function? No, never function a day. And this is, this is but a room, basically. I'm not too sharp at measurements, but this is a small yeah. uh, building. It could be a guard hut if you don't know what's behind here. And you're telling me, what's, what's the cost of it? I'm bracing myself. Oh, $60 million. $60 million. It was told. So what have we seen here? We've seen a, a, a small building there. Let me try to get it a little closer. You can see right there. Let me, let me get it a little closer. You don't know what is inside. It's a secret. Yeah, apparently. So you're telling me $60 million. million. Dollars. So what are we seeing here? $60 million left idle. This is but a room here. Yeah. I don't even want to hazard with the measurement. It's because I might lead you all astray with that. But this is a simple room, as it were. Yeah. I don't think you could fit a bed in there properly. No. Never worked today. The only thing happened there, they drilled. And I think they seal it off. Drill and seal. And that's it. There's no pump in there. And $60 million. $60 million. And basically a white elephant. It is. Never functioned. Never functioned. You see, 
the only thing with it is a white elephant, but you got a little blue on it. <laughs> so I don't know when the minister would look at it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they would spend some more money on it so somebody can have some money. I'm trying to get in a little closer. Give you guys another angle. $60 million, see. Mm -hmm. The gentleman is telling us. Was you, Sebeldas? And he's saying, never work today. Around 2012, 2013, there's a door there. That's the extent of it right there. Never work today. I'm seeing some piping running at the back there. Some pipes there. Our brother says $60 million. Grass is on the ground here. All manner of things. Little room. Sixty million dollars. Heading back out. This has never concerned the residents here, you know. <laughs> the the residents read this on a number of occasions, but um, it's not real. Mm -hmm. Nobody come back to investigate or see what they would do with it. Mm -hmm. But the last thing happened that. They dig a well at Nikodak, where the old well is, mm -hmm. and they were hoping, according to the president, we'll have treated water. But there's a big question mark when? Yeah. But the water is a very poor quality of water, very, very poor quality. Yeah. Welcome back, folks. They said the angle is booming. The progress of Wiccan Arms booming, booming. Dolly, Sandra, what do you guys think? Patricia, Patricia, uh, uh, Daly, Neon Harding, Donna, what do you guys think? DPI, the People's Progressive Party led administration, says things on the island booming. <laughs> Maxine says it's, it is a blue for me, MP Duncan. Yeah. The white telephone with a little blue. <laughs> the white and blue elephant. Folks, the white telephones of Wickenham. <laughs> they said things are booming. Let's take a look at another one. I'm, an, I'm advising you guys. I'm going to owe you all some. Right. Wouldn't show y'all all now. Y'all got to join some of the other broadcasts. Maybe if y'all share the live and so on. Really good this morning. Smash that emoji button. Really good. We might show you all. all right. But just because I love you guys so bad. And love spending this time with you folks here. Let's take a look at another white elephant. Folks, it's so much happening. We can spend the next Monday week and I'm alone. And you wouldn't be starved for content on this program. It is so much happening. It's fascinating. And since we've been sharing what we saw on the Isle of Wickenham, oh, the vice chair has run out on social media. You know, a lot of the folks there, counselors and so on for the PPP. See, everything is up and up here. They even went as far to say they're not trying to victimize Auntie Data. No, 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 they said. They pointed to a lamppost in the street where Auntie Data lives, behind her house. Said, look, if we were victimizing her, we wouldn't put a light on Auntie Data post. <laughs> That's the evidence. There's no victimization. Yeah. We beg. And we got sense. These are folks who would kill you. Come and cry at your funeral and then fight your family to read the eulogy. Fight your family to read the eulogy. They tell us Irfan Ali visit is eminent now to Wickenham. You're going to cuss all them out. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi. He's going to cuss all of them out. Right. Summon all the engineers. Who tell you how to put light there? 
Get it down, folks. Another white elephant, the drying floor. <laughs> Another PP white elephant in Wickenham, the drying floor. <laughs> Take a look at a Mustang, Uncle Perry. A legendary man in his own right. Uncle Perry has been a faithful servant of the People's National Congress reform. You know, this is a man who knew Burnham. I envy for that. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Perry, for taking us through the paces and showing us these projects. The drying floor. Folks, I encourage you. We would love as many presents as possible to get this valid, credible information. So we are at another spot on the island of Wakanam. Tell us what we're seeing here. We're standing here in Mirzog, Wakanam. This plot of land is a private-owned property. Uh -huh. Private-owned property. I don't know what arrangement they have, but the government has spent 19 point something million dollars to make, they say, a drying floor. To date, this land floor is not in use. So we want to know what... So they're they, leasing it from this person? Not leasing. I understand they have just lent them this piece of land to build this drying floor. And how long was this built here? In the early is when the PPP took office. Wow, this is what? Um... This is 2024 now. Yeah. So in this term here? In this term. In this term, I see the, yeah. the sign board behind you says $19,740,968. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not used. Not used. I see land donated by Tulsi Passan. Yeah. Monastero. So we do not, I do not know if, if you donate, it's supposed to be government property. Mm -hmm. And so far, nobody can tell you anything. I don't know if that's just a sham, you know. $90 million has now used. Let me, get, let me get up a little closer to the yeah. signboard here. Folks, I want you all to see this. When we were coming into Markenham and one of the roads, we saw Selandia. some rice being dried there. But this is action area. You market it for that. Get some of that. And this is a project of the Ministry of Agriculture. Ghana Rice Development Board, it says construction of a concrete drying floor and heavy duty tumble, uh, timber bridge, Wickenham region number three. And that's what it says there. Yeah. That's what the board says. And this is the area. As the guy so kindly told us, Mr. Perry, $19 million. Donated by Tulsi Pasad. The land was donated by Tulsi Pasad. It's supposed to be a drying floor for rice. It's not in use. People are still using the roadways. And this is that bridge, the timber bridge we saw mentioned on the project board there. Yeah. Mr. Perry, why do you think that this 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 um, land here, this drying floor is not in, in use? Well, we see that rice going down, the production of rice, party going down every day. I don't know why government would want to invest on a, in a drying floor. As soon as the farmers reap their party, the party will be shipped off the island. There's one mill who buy paddies sometimes, and they have their own dryer. So this is not a profitable project of benefiting the people. It's just a drying floor to spend money. That's what I see. If it's already used and they can use it for alternative purposes, okay. Why do you think they're not using it? Because I said that most of the crops that planted when they reap, the next day is off the island. And if you look at the production of paddy, it's going down every day. But at times the government want to blame, this president government want to blame it on the weather. 
during the afternoon time. It's the same weather we were experiencing and we have more production than now. But what happened the farmers and we can arm this planting? They had it, they had the alternative agriculture. Right. Uh, when I... we were there, they were saying planting to government. But now they could have seen the wisdom in that government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got that is sustaining them. Wow. Plantings. Go more than any other thing on the <laughs> Right. So they said that uh, agriculture is booming. Mm -hmm. But you said now it's alternative crops. Alternative crops. Yeah. Because never, nobody never knew that so much of planting could have grown on Wakenham. And good plantings. We are thinking about the islands. But now, massive planting. Thanks to the Green Tree Administration, planting chip government. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love me, Sir Uncle Perry. <laughs> love, love me, Sir Uncle Perry and his darling wife. Good morning to you folks there and all the folks in Wickenham. Across the political divide. Across the political divide. Hope you guys were hearing that. Sean, Sean Goodrich says no sound. Is it us? I want you guys to hear very, very, very clearly. What Uncle Perry was saying. Was it that, Sean? Sean says no sound. No, sir. No sound. The white elephants. You're all going to have to join us for subsequent programs, folks. For the rest, for the rest, we owe you all four more. If, if my, you all know me, Max, is so good. But if my count, you know, if my count is okay. You know, we give you three white elephants just for, oh, you four, four more. We got touching the airport. You know, that's another one. Another white, another white elephant. It's a white elephant government. <laughs> it's a white elephant government. And you know, folks, they tell us the whale, the whale's gas to shore. Oh, that's a depart for white elephant status. Right? They're bringing back the other white elephant. A mile of falls. That's coming back. Right? Amit Tichel says loud and clear in Madia. <laughs> Here's a Jackman wants to know where are all the plantings going because planting in the market is expensive. Where are all the plantings going? You see, folks, we could drill down so much in all that we've covered thus far. We could drill down. So much. I really want to encourage you. This is the work we are committed to do. This is the work we are committed to doing. Bringing you Hazel Jackman, Zero Hero, Lionel Simon, valid, credible information. And that is why we ask you wonderful folks to partner with us. We got a higher boat. And go to places like Wickenham, Leguan, so many other islands in the Escapable River. It costs us something. And we don't, we don't get no subvention from the government like NCN, like Chronicle, like DPI. We got to go out of pocket. Margaret, thanks for the thing, Margaret Nelson. Margaret, thanks for the thing. And that's why we've asked each of you. Folks, if you were buying a newspaper a day, you would be spending more than 10 US dollars a month. Don't worry about Margaret's and we. We're asking you to commit to sending us $10 a month. And we would go this country coast to coast and show you the thousand white telephones of the PVP. The thousand white elephants of the PVP. You can see a link zooming past you. We've partnered with an international company called Stripe. It's an international company. That link is more secure than the Ghana Police Force. It is more secure than the Ghana Defense Force. It is more secure than the Venezuelans. So you have nothing to fear. Only fear itself. And we don't keep any of your information. We do not keep any of your information. It's not stored with us. 
partner with us, folks, and set us to work for you. You know, some of the clarity you see in that image. A member of parliament, I don't know if I have permission to call his name, said, I want to invest in what y'all doing. And he bought us a very nice camera, gifted that to us. He said, I want to support what y'all are doing. And he invested that in our program. A member of parliament, it costs us about 700 US dollars to procure. And if you add another, maybe 10,000 to ship it in, you do the math. So we are saying $10 a month for the rest of you. He said, I love what I see you all doing in the ring with credible sources. And he gifted us 700, a local MP. If I have permission to call his name, I'll call his name. He gifted us that. So if you see the imagery looking a little clearer, <laughs> a little more stable, big shout out to him this morning if he's watching us. And what we say we will do, we do. We didn't take your hard-earned money and gone frolicking any place. So, so much for that. So much for that, folks. We owe you all some white elephants. Right? We owe you all some white elephants. June, St. John Passat says, Margaret, send the child support. <laughs> June know the whole thing. June know the whole, June know the whole story. Right? June know the whole story. The whole thing. So we're committed to doing this work. I feel like I can stop the program right here. But let's show you a couple other things. Let's show you guys a couple other things that we're covering this morning. Some folks are trying to come. Clearly, they're not watching the program. I'm vexed with them. <laughs> the Ganshas of this world, the Jaikarans of this world. I'm vexed with them. So it's a lot happening, folks. And we're just happy. We're just happy to be part of it. And we got a passion for bringing you this information. Because if we leave it up to DPI, how are you all going to know the truth? June St. John, Beryl Crawford. Leslie Hamilton, Dan Graves, Andy, Dan, <laughs> Margaret, right? Sheila Boy Child. Good to have you all here. Let me send you all the other link too. I can do it from my end. So if you all want to make a one time donation, right? I saw Sheila Boy Child sent us a donation. And I'd have you know when you send it on YouTube, YouTube takes out a, a little portion of it. So if you want YouTube to get nothing, there's another link going to fly past you there. Those parts, we just want to make a one-time. You, you don't want to commit $10 a month. You just want to make a one-time donation. Right? If you want YouTube to get nothing, if you want YouTube to get nothing, there you go. <laughs> there you go, folks. There you go. All right? So there's a lot happening, folks. G come telling us or is reporting that an organization, an organization called Future Forward Foundation has been visiting a home in Wismar purporting to represent GCOM and asking for certain information. I'm happy that GCOM has been proactive like this. You know, it should be a little proactive with Dr. Asha Kisun, and their leader of the list issues and whether she's sitting legally in the National Assembly, one. Anuk says she's squatting. She should have gone since last November. But Asha said, I'm moving. And I'm telling Anuk I'm not going. He says, and you, 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 and you, you're going to love me. Channeling some. Dream girl's there. She says she's not going. But she comes says this future forward foundation. I'm hunting down some contacts or a contact for the future forward foundation because I want to know what they've been doing there. 
if what Chikam is saying is true, what have they been doing in Wisma and under whose authority? Collecting names. To have folks joining us out of Region 10 in Wisma, you all got any footage? Do you guys have any footage? You know what affects me this morning? Hold on. Something just flashed past my mind. You wouldn't see this on no other program. <laughs> Something just flashed across my mind. You know, when we come off this program, I see we got 20 shares. I can fix with some of y'all. Huh? 20 shares, 15 shares. You might be able to send us a one-time donation. Much more to partner with us every month. Because some of y'all believe we can build a house and buy fancy car and you know, go to Starbucks every day. <laughs> you know? But it won't cost you anything to share the life. Unless you frighten the PPP. Unless you frighten the PPP. And we have presented some valid and credible information. And so we ask that you share it so that others know the truth and that the truth that they will come to know will set them free. So share that information for us good folks. Vashti, Enid, Robert, Marlin, Rahim, Beatrice, Camille. Camille say late, but I share. I love me some Camille Cox. Out of Region 6, fantastic counselor. Good morning, Camille. No doubt by this time, Camille is back home from the gym. You know, getting in that exercise like, like Margaret Nelson all the way out there in, in the Carolinas. Already had her moringa tea. Right? Rahim Amarali. Well, good morning to you, Rahim. Folks, you all send Rahim some cyber hugs for us. Rahim, you come here every day and you consume this information. Ow. Ow, Rahim. Ow. Help to keep us going. <laughs> For your morning entertainment, Rahim. Send us a donation as we send you some cyber hugs. Send us a donation. Dolly Everett Luan Lionel. Send us a donation. Please and thank you. So watch out, Linden. GCOM says they have no involvement in these activities of this Future Forward Foundation and have not authorized any data collection. I hope you all hear it very clearly. Right? They said that their staff, GCOM staff, GCOM authorized staff, GCOM proper staff, and scrutineers must display identification badges belonging to GCOM, not some other organization, and accreditation badges as well. And so GCOM is cautioning, cautioning the public not to recognize anyone without a GCOM identification. That's what they're saying. Not to recognize anyone without GCOM identification. So be cautious out there and ask for identification. Right? Please and thank you. Camille says she's saving for her waking arm trip. As we're going back, got to go back, folks. The action sweet, sweet, sweet in waking arm. The action real sweet here. Right? And Naomi says that GCOM is a distract GCOM is a distraction <laughs> from GPL. Distraction tactics. Well, a friendship is over in a rancor. It turned deadly folks on Sunday. You know, the death of a pork knocker. Friends. Trevor Hilliman. A pork knocker was stabbed by his friend, Kenny David. 
I want friends like this. I can't afford it. My life depends on it. Trevor Hilliman, thoughts and prayers to his family. They said the incident occurred at John L. Gaskin shop in Aranka in the Northwest District on Sunday. In Aranka, John L. Gaskin shop. As we said, the two guys were friends. This is Trevor Hilliman and Kenny David. And after a heated argument, David stabbed Hilliman in his left side of his chest. He was arrested at the scene. Caution, the report said, and arrested. I'm concerned that life in this country is so cheap that people don't think twice. I like my freedom. I don't know about Rahim Amarali. I don't know about Lionel Simon, Gloria Pat, Gwen Anderson, Kyle, but you know, I love my freedom. I love the ability to go to Wakanam, get the valid and credible information, and come back and say, Rahim, look, look the nonsense your government doing. What are you going to say, hey? <laughs> what are you going to say, hey? And all Rahim can say is, we all SOPs. Is the SOPs responsible for all them white elephants? All them white elephants. Because if the SOPs are right, those white elephants won't exist. That is Brahim Amrani's argument. So this heated argument produced the death of a friend, our thoughts and prayers with these families. Our thoughts and prayers with them. Yeah. Argument gone wrong. Look at this. We've been following these industrial accidents, as it were. Yet another one at Puruni Bagdam of recent. And this time, the death of 47. A 47-year-old miner, Stephen Mark Samuels, died after a pit collapsed at Puruni Bagdam. This is Region 7 on, on Sunday. And we've been following them. We're not getting the, re, the, the results of the investigations out of the Ministry of Labor. They stood down and they promise. You know the fun promise? Y'all know what's here, friend promise? No stone unturned. And then they don't turn any stones. It's another, another accident. And they're always got some element of what you're seeing here. Stephen Mark Samuels, who was involved in this fatal Puruni Bagdam pit collapse. The report said that he was working with a Brazilian national on a land dredge. And part of the eastern wall broke off and fell into the pit, covering Samuels. An alarm was raised, they tell us. And Samuel's body was removed from the rubble. That's it, you know. Life. So fragile in this country. So fragile. Frida Bacchus. Frida know the whole thing. No stone unturned. So fragile. Maria Jackman got the wisdom of the morning. Maria says that Big stone heart for turn. Maybe they run into some of that. Big stone heart for turn. Reports indicate that Samuel's body was examined and no signs of violence was found and that Samuel's was pronounced dead at the Peroni Health Center. That is information we have. And that at the moment 
In other news, folks, if you're in, if you're in Georgetown, if you're in Georgetown, the traffic chief Mahindra Singh has approved some new rush hour traffic arrangements for Carifesta Avenue. And they're telling us that the avenue will become a one-way for westbound traffic into Georgetown starting today from 7 to 8, 30 hours. So both sides of Carifesta Avenue, that's my, my thinking of it, becomes a one-way traffic. Good? One-way traffic. And this is this initiative, they say, was prompted by the high number of children who attend Marion Academy. You know, early in my teaching experience, I taught at Marion Academy. Believe it or not. You all think I just land here, you know? You all think I just meet here? You know? So the folks who are going to be traversing that area is in the morning. I'd rather suspect you going up on the seawall road to get up to the East Coast. And both sides of the Carifest Avenue is going to be a one-way coming down. So take note of that, folks. Take note of that. And this is so the um, facilitate the kids going to Marion and the kind of bottleneck that happens there. So he's facing traffic going on the seawall road and everything coming down from the East Coast. You're coming down from the East Coast and into the city on Carifesta. Both sides of the road there is going to be used for traffic. Right? Free the backer says songs dangerous. Songs dangerous. Good folks, that's going to do it for us at this end this morning. And as I did say, I'm acutely aware that I owe you all some white elephants. <laughs> I owe you all some white elephants. Struggling hard this morning not to make the whole program about Wicked Ham because there are other things happening. As grave as the things on Wicked Ham happening. Big shout out to all of the um, councillors there across the political divide in Wicked Ham. Some are working harder than others, no doubt. Some are working much, much harder than others. But keep pushing forward. The council, the representatives of the region, got a lot of work to do as well. Good morning to the representatives of the region there in, in Wicada. Good morning to Charlotte Dunbar. Councillor from San Susi represents that constituency. Auntie Hazel Edwards, councillor who represents Maria Joanna. Councillor Angela Danny Ram from Dumburg represents that constituency. Good morning to you. And of course, our APNU AFC Regional Councillor, who was my guide and all those white telephones of the PPP. Perry Bebal, Uncle Perry, known on the island as Uncle Perry. And folks, aside from the politics, politics aside, we have a beautiful country. Wickenham is a beautiful piece of real estate. Oh, you stopped at some of the houses. You sample the hammock. That breeze hitting you there. I had some labor. Some beautiful labor. Compliments of one of the residents there. It worked real nice. I stayed away from the rum because we were working. We didn't play. <laughs> I'm not one for alcohol. Anyhow, you know. But sometimes you know, I, I become all things to all men. That some might be converted to Apnu AFC. <laughs> I'm turning a biblical quote there. I become all things, you know. People offer you something. You, know, you take a sample. <laughs> you know, you become all things at some. Clear coming back, reminding us the white elephants with the little blue. The white elephants with the little blue. Folks, 
Thanks for being here with us this morning. Leslie Hamilton, Desri Albert, Diane Abrams, Samoa Williams, Everett Leonard, and the hundreds of you who've joined us across social media. Consider partnering with us, $10 a month, folks. Keep our program going. Keep our broadcast going. You know, keep credible sources going broadly. Partner with us. You might want to make a one-time donation. That's available as well, folks. You can do any of that. Certainly, you can share the live. Certainly, you can smash that emoji button, folks, so that others might get valid and credible information as well. That being said, folks, have a fantastic rest of the day. Auntie Sandra, I see you there. Anna Ward, Roxanne Garvey, Sean James, see you there too. Sean and all the other folks who are joining us this morning. Big shout out to Sean. Y'all send Sean some cyber hugs, man. Send Sean some, cy some cyber hugs. You, you, you know people who, you know, they get breastfeed and so on. You know? <laughs> you just know them. Send Sean some joy this morning. Gwyneth Anderson and all the other folks who are here with us this morning. Right? Davy Lal says the wild elef the white elephants are called albinos or albinos. Same thing. <laughs> Valerie, Pretty Melicia, Sharon, Raquel, and all the other folks sending you love this morning. You know, and some good energy. Don't let anybody steal your joy. This Tuesday morning, Tuesday, the 16th day of April, 2024, in the year of our Lord. That's our time. And that's our program.